you know, uh, you can uh, you can you can prepare a message and you can, you can put a lot of thought into it and you can prepare a, a video to intro it and uh, and and what God's put on my heart to, to share is a is a it's a message of 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 uh, continuing the work. Finish, finish. Amen. Callie sang a song about dying to live and living to die for the call. When Clint started singing, you know, uh, <laughs> anybody, just about anybody can get up here and preach about believing. Just about any of us can say, oh, I'm a believer and keep living life. But when, when, when you're dealing with with the dying and you still say oh but I believe that's living that's living I don't know I, I just we're not going to show that we're not going to do that maybe at the end I don't know what we're doing but that uh, that uh, I want to tell y'all something Today I'm going to preach, and I'm going to do my best not to get mad. I preached this same type of, this same sort of message yesterday at a biker rally in Mount Pleasant. And I didn't know it, and I'm not proud of it, but I got in the car, and my wife said, you cussed three times while you were preaching. And I said, well, I'm glad they're rough guys, because none of them blush or, or get upset. Uh, I, 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 I get... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real honest. And here's what happens when you believe. And I'm not gonna get mad. I, I, I'm 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 I wanna be I'm trying to learn how to be righteously angry. Because I I wanna know how to be I wanna know what to be angry. I'm not mad at anybody that ever walks in these doors. I'm, listen, when you start thinking I'm talking about you, I am not talking about you. I'm telling you that up front. It is not, it, it, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about the situations. I'm, I am talking about the enemy that we face. And he is not a person. He is Satan and his demons. And they are, they are, we wage war not against. But I'm, clear, I'm doing a disclaimer right now. Because I promise you, while I'm preaching, some of you are going to go, he's talking about me. And you have two choices. You can get mad and leave. Or you can get mad and say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. Because, because we do not wage war against one another. We are, in, we are fully engaged in a battle. And I'm going to be honest. I, I went to a, a, a deal Friday morning. And I told a group of men, uh, a couple of them are here today, and some of them, I don't, they don't go to this church. They're just men that meet and eat breakfast. And I told them, I, I ain't heard from God in three weeks. I was partially telling the truth. And I told him last week, I, I really wish I could find a big tall building and just jump off because I'm really sick of it. I'm really tired. I was asked, uh, Tony King asked me the other day, he said, what part, of, what part of history do you think you missed out on? I said, I missed out on the part of history when you died young because I don't mind fighting and I like to, I want to put it all out there, but then I would really like to go out in a blaze of glory. I would, I would rather have a cause and, and radically fight and die than to do what we're called to do, and that's live. Every day, get up and say, I will die to myself for the cause of Christ. Every day, I have to get up and go, it ain't about you, Jay. You would love to go out in a blaze of glory. You know, Augustus and, and, and Woodrow were in San Antonio, and they're riding out, and, and Augustus said, well... You know, the only reason they don't write songs about us, they don't even remember us. You know why? Because we didn't die. We are called as Christians to live daily by dying continuously. I had I, I, no idea that's what, what I signed up for. But as I've dealt with what I've dealt with, I lied to them guys on Friday morning. I texted Sean during the week, and he out of the blue texted me, how are you? And I said, I'm not good. I haven't heard from God in three weeks. And I'm really tired. 
I, I, I'm, I'm not a person that contemplates suicide, but I'm, I'm, I'm a person that, I am a cowboy. Y'all know that old song, he, don't, he, just rides, he just rides off. Cowboys ain't easy to love. And I'm tired of being lovable. I'm tired of being friendly. I want to just ride off. I just want to get on my horse and take my dog, and I want to ride off. And I want to tell all of y'all and my family and the service of the ministry, I'm just being honest, and you can choose another church if you want to. I want to tell you all, via come this. Because I'm tired. But I know that's what he wants. That's what the enemy wants. After I spoke at that biker rally, one of this dude was this this dude was huge and ugly and mean looking and not only when he rode his motorcycle to the windows rattle, but when he spoke, it's like and he said, God called me into the ministry of these to bikers when I was nineteen. And this guy, I don't know how old he was. You can't tell the if you, if you, I'm not even guessing. But he said, let me just tell you something. You're in too deep to get out. I'm like, well, y'all can clap if you want to. By golly, listen. <laughs> can I tell you something? This is the truth. The day you told Jesus Christ that you would accept what he gave up for you, you got in too dang deep. You can't get out either. You can't quit. He wants you to quit. You can't quit. I'm going to preach a series. I, 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 Lord, I please, please, this ain't no series. Let me give birth to this one time and be done. <laughs> Today's message is called Cattle Call. And, you know, I know that I've noticed that this happens to me every year in July. Every year in July. Every year in July. In February, we met with a, a pastor out of Dallas. His name is Robert Morris. He's, a, he's an awesome teacher. Some of y'all may have read his books. I mean, but me and Christy were blessed with the opportunity to go and meet with him. And he told me, he said, this is your seventh year, right, in the church. I said, yes, sir. He said, you need a sabbatical. And I said, that's not possible. I mean, I've got too, many, too much going. And he said, I'm telling you right now, you're tired, you're wore out, you may not realize it, you may think you can handle it, you may think, I got this, you need a sabbatical of a few months. And I, I laughed out loud. I, I'm, I'm like, he said, you, you, you're going to, before the end of this year, you're going you're gonna to know you should have heard me. I hear you. I hear him. When we call cattle, a lot of us use a horn, a lot of us use a siren, a lot of us use a bucket and a sack, and boy, we love it when the cattle respond. Today I'm going to preach about a different cattle call, and it's the one that you call when the cattle don't respond. When you, when you, uh, when you go find them, and when you find them in the thickets, and you call out, you, you do a cattle call so that your, your partners... Three things happen when you do a cattle call like that. You, uh, you, you, you tell the location... When you finally find where the cow is, uh, you, 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 I'm going to do it real quick. So they know where you're at and you got the cow and you'll know where they're at and they come to you. You don't have to, that's a, that's a whole conversation in our world. That's a, that's a whole conversation. And as they approach, they'll, they'll call back and you call back and, and, and anyway, that is a frustrating call because you have had to look and hunt and fight to find. And then usually when you find her, she's bait up in a thicket and you, how in the world are we going to get her out of this thicket? And you, so it's, it's, not, it's not the same type of cow call. But when you do that cow call, three things happen. You tell the location where you're at, you rally the troops, you rally the hands, and you gain direction. As they come, you can know which way we need to push, where my help's at, I'm helped, I, got, I got help on the right flank or I got help on the left flank. We know which way to put pressure on that cow because when she busts that thicket, you, you want her to run into the next guy. This all started uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, I can't remember if it's July or August. We were, we were, the Lord gave me this scripture 
in July's board conference call to AFCC. And I read this scripture to them. And, and, uh, and I, the reason, I'm going to be honest with you, and Sean told me this today and I hadn't thought about it, but the reason I haven't heard from God, and I told you I lied to them men and I, I kind of lied to Sean, it, it's been six or eight weeks since I've heard from God. Since I, I, I got... Now, he gives me a little bit of stuff, and he'll, but, but I mean, I really, uh, and I'll tell you why. Because when I heard this from God, I didn't want to hear it. When, when God told me, this is where you're at. This is where you, your church is at. This is where your leadership is at. This is where we cut the boys from the men. Will you man up? I told him, no, I don't have to. I don't have to do that. And ever since I told him I didn't have to do that, he's waited on me to do what all I want to do so I can come back and do what he wants me to do. So, so, uh. We're going to be in Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4. And I guess about late July, first part of August, we were pinning a set of cows. Me and Audie Green, Ty, and Michael Bartley were pinning a set of cows uh, for Michael's uncle over here in Tatum. And, and we, man, we, we, it was hot. So we started really, really early. Daylight, had the cows bathed, drove the whole pasture of cattle all the way across there and put them in a little portable pen. I mean, it was like perfect. All except the two bulls. We were going to kid the two bulls and pull the bulls off the cows. So we, no, we, nobody seen a bull. We didn't see the first bull. So we ride back through, and we start riding through the thicket. And I, I jump one of them up out of a dry creek bed. He's, he's down in that creek bed. And it's, it's hot enough now, them bulls are, you know, they're off in the, in the shade. And, and we jump that bull up, and I hollered. I, I give a cattle call, and, and here in just a second, I hear Audie holler back. He's in the clearing in front of me. And I hear Ty holler back. He's coming up behind me, so I know, you know, where our help is, and, and I holler at Michael, and Michael gets to the, to the left side. Anyway, we flushed that bull out in the opening, and the guys were positioned just right. He turned, headed straight, and when he got headed toward the cattle, he went on and went to the cattle because we were putting pressure on him. So we had all the bull, we had one bull left, and we looked, and we looked, and we rode, and we rode, and the dogs were tired. We were hot. All we needed to do that day was pin them, pull the two bulls off and take them to the bull pasture and wean the big calves and sell them. All, we, had, we were so close and we lacked one bull that would not let us finish the work. That one bull was holding us up. Everything was standing in the pen ready to be sorted, let the cows back out, but you can't do that with one bull walking around. You won't never get him. You, you know what I'm saying? So that, we were so close to having the work that needed to be done done that we, 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 we could be done but we were lacking just a little bit. We just, and and we, you won't talk about frustrated. You won't talk about irritated. Every time we would jump that bull, he would, he would go from one thicket to the next. Every time. And them dogs didn't phase him. They were barking right in his face and hollering. And, 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 and he'd just go from one thicket to the next. Then we'd jump him up and he'd go right out of that one straight off into another one. And you just you couldn't. Finally, finally, I mean, we're just wore out. We're just exhausted and tired and frustrated. And you know, the Lord was speaking to me that day, and he said, there are many times when you're doing the work of the Lord that you will be frustrated, that you will be tired, that you will be discouraged to the degree that you think there's, it's never going to end. It's, it's, when, is the, when is it going to be good again? And, and I'm, I'm telling you all the truth, uh, and, 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 and I, I want to I wanna try, I'm trying my best just to not make this a pity party because y'all all know I'm not very good at being pitiful to y'all. Or how do you say that? Huh? I'm not very good at being sympathetic with y'all, you know, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm not real, I'm not into that. I'm not, so I'm trying not to be that big whiny sissy. And, if I, and when I am, and when I, 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 know, I already know I am, I don't, if you feel good to tell me you big wine bag, that's fine. Just wait till after the service. But <clears throat> Nehemiah 4, 9, and 10. Nehemiah was sent by God by God to do a work, to build a wall. And, and listen, he, Nehemiah had a lot of work ahead of him. Nehemiah had been working hard. And Nehemiah had been achieving what God had called him to do. Nehemiah, would, him, and his, him and the Jews, they had been getting it done. They had been moving forward. We're seven years old, and we have been called to do a work. And we've been getting it done. We've moved forward in so many areas. We've advanced in, for so many things. The Lord has blessed us abundantly, but we have been diligent to work hard and to move forward and to try to do what he called us to do. 
to church the unchurched, to be a church that's, 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 that's for unchurched, to be loving and caring, to, to, to fight where fighting needs to take place for each other and for, 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 the, for, the, for, the, for the lost and for the, for the hurting, for the wounded. And, and, and I, believe, I believe we've done a good job. I'm not bragging on us, but I believe the Lord has blessed us and we, we, have, we have been diligent as best we know how, and that's all he asks. Look, there's something I want to make sure I get this right, so you may have to help me. Satan does not respect sincerity at all. He could care less of how serious you are. He don't give a rip that you're serious about what God gave you the ability. He don't care how serious you are at trying to do. He could care less. The only thing Satan respects is authority. Flip side, Jesus don't respect no authority but the Trinity, and he respects sincerity. So when you sincerely try to do God's will, when you seriously try to walk and find in his way, when you seriously try to die to yourself so that you, he might live through you, you get Jesus' attention. And in the authority of Jesus, Satan has got to go. He's defeated. Because of the authority, not because of how serious you are. You can seriously bow your neck every day and want to whoop him. And you're going to get your butt handed to you. I am a living experience. I get it. I, I, sometimes I forget and I think, oh, I, I love to do this to my wife when she's worrying about money or worrying about this or worrying about this or that or, or I'll just do this right here. And a lot of y'all are thinking that that used to be an old symbol for something else. But to us, that means I got this. I just, I just, no matter, and, 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 and my wife goes, okay, big boy. <laughs> she won't check it off. The concern list, you know, the, the, the house payment, she's like, oh, you know, I'm a little concerned my check's not going to get here in time. And I, 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 hey, hey, hey. And she'd be like, okay. <laughs> she's good with that. I am bad to try to tell Jesus. I got this. I tell Satan, I got this. And you know what he does? He laughs his butt off. I guarantee he goes, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to watch you wear yourself out while you got this. Because he don't care how serious I am. He does not have no respect for the seriousness and the, the determination that I have. It don't affect him at all. Nehemiah 4, 9, and 10 now, Nehemiah is building the wall, and his work is being ridiculed, and they have plotted and schemed on how to stop his work, the enemies. He said, but we prayed to our God, and because of them, we set up a guard against them day and night. Thus in Judah it was said that the strength of the burden bearers is failing, yet there is much rubbish, and we ourselves are unable to rebuild the wall. Nehemiah did two things. He put his faith in God through the prayer that he prayed, and he prepared the followers so that they wouldn't, be asleep and, and, and un, un, unaware of the attack. He said, he, said, this, he said, we prayed to our God, and because of them we set up a guard against them day and night. He prayed to God, and he said, you and you, and you better pay attention. You guys watch us throughout the night. You, you guys pay attention. You stand guard throughout the day. So he didn't just pray to God and say, God's got this, no problem, I'm, I'm good. No. He prayed and, 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 and uh, what do you call it, engaged his faith, and then he positioned and engaged the work. Are you following me? You, you, you can't, it's not enough just to pray and say, God's got this, and kick back in the easy chair and watch the ball game. Yes, God's got this. Now get off your can and get in position. And, and Nehemiah is the builder of the wall. He's the leader. He, is the, he was called by God. Now, this is what I haven't wanted to do. This is what I haven't wanted to, to get it. This is where for six or eight weeks ago, the Lord told me, and, and even before then, do you know that, like I said, in February, Robert Morris told me, your church is finna get hammered like you ain't seen. You think you've seen it, you, but, but you're seven years old. There's a, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of, of warfare that takes place in the seventh, the year of completion, the, the, the number of fullness. There's a, he said, I'm telling you, there's symbol, symbolisms that I don't even understand, but he said, I, I've been in ministry 30 years, I'm telling you, you will have your butt handed to you this year. He was not wrong. He is not wrong. 
a few months ago, an elder in an elder lay pastor meeting said, we will deal with the spirit of pride and arrogance and division the rest of this year. He was dead on the money. We have dealt, I, every time I turn around, the spirit of pride is not only in my life, it's not only am I battling it in my life, I'm, we're battling it in yours. The spirit of arrogance is so, is, I'm just being honest, it is so thick in our church right now that it sickens me. And, I'm, and today what I'm doing is I'm trusting and I'm putting my faith in God, but I'm also enlightening the body. I'm making you aware to put you in position. The spirit of division is among us. It is among us. And listen to me. It is among you. It is not you, but it has attached itself to several of you. It has attached itself to me. And I have had to repent and come to the terms that my pride got in the way. My own arrogance gets in the way. And I'm going to tell you this much. There may be a, I am a failure in a lot of things. I am not a very good dad. I'm getting better at being a husband. And I'm really not good at being a pastor. I'm just being honest. And please don't come up here and, it's like Clint said, and tell me what well, we're praying for you and we love you. That, that's not comforting. I know who I am. I know where I come from. I know, what I, I know the demons that I battle. I know them. But I will be an obedient servant. So at the end of this message, whether it be in 30 minutes or an hour, you will make a decision whether you will stand on the wall or you will tote your butt. And I do not care which one because today I will do what Nehemiah did in Nehemiah 4 and he will enlighten you and I will tell you and I will, I will say we will, we will battle this together today. He said in, he said in, Liam, in, in 11, 11 through 13, our, our enemies said that they will not know or see until we come among them and kill them and put a stop to the work. Listen to me. He does not care if he has to kill you. He does not really want to kill you. I mean, it's not what he's out for. He's out to stop the work, the work that Christ began in you. The work that each one of us, that the, the, the blood of Jesus began the day you accept Him as Lord and Savior. He wants to stop it. That's what He wants. If He has to kill you to make it stop, <laughs> it's okay with Him. But if He can just frustrate you to the point that you say, I'm done. Then he, that's, all He wants is the work to stop. Do you know we have been working since 07 on reaching the lost in the Western heritage culture, on telling people about Jesus, on loving people where they're at, on, 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 we have worked on us becoming more Christ-like and less us-like. We have, we, have, we have worked on sending people out. Do you know how many people? I'm, I, I love to see them leave on, and go and minister and, and be a part of God's, advancing God's kingdom. And it's, it's awesome to see people grow and go, I'm going to go and serve. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for the Lord. I'm going to do that for the Lord. It, it, I... I bring you back to verse 11. And I want to remind you of what happened a few years ago at 9-11. Did you know that they didn't sound the alarm and tell us they were coming? They walked on the plane among us. They, listen to me. This is, not just a, this is about every aspect of your life. Your home. You want the work of your home to continue to work. The enemy does not necessarily or very seldom does he bring an attack with a banner and stick it in your yard. He infiltrates in the middle of the night through the computer screen or he infiltrates at the workplace where your spouse gets tempted by some dude who's so full of crap he ain't never done nothing worth of crap in his life but she thinks he hung the moon. He does, he does not come in through the front door. The sucker comes through the back. And all he wants to do is stop the work. In your home, men. In your, it, 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 oh, I'm not going to get mad today. And please know my heart. I am not mad at anyone. I am not mad at anyone. I am mad at what the enemy does. You know what he wants to do? He wants to stop you from driving all the way home from West Texas to fix somebody's a church's parking lot and drive your butt war out tired all the way. He wants to stop that. And... To heck with him. We're not going to let him stop that. I did not cuss.
Okay. <laughs> 12, yes, praise the Lord. Yes. <clears throat> Listen in verse 12. When the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times, ten times they were told, ten times, they will come upon and against us from every place where you may be, where you may turn. Then I stationed men in the lower parts of the space behind the wall, exposed places. I stationed the people in families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Nehemiah said, we've been warned. We've been warned. Listen, we, we've been warned. I failed to warn you. Because you know why? Because I said, I said, I got this, Lord. I said, I got this. I was warned in February. I was warned again in July. I was warned in June. I was warned. I've been warned so many times that this is the year he will stop the work if we're not careful. Not just the work of the church, but the work in many of your lives. And I thought I got this. I ain't got nothing. I got nothing but a broke heart. I got nothing but a... And my wife says I can't have it. And until the Lord tells me what to do, with it, I hate Satan. She told me I can't have hate in my heart because hate builds up bitterness. But I have such a disgust for what he does to people and how he stops their, the work. He stops it. And then churches just stand still and bodies just don't move and families just grow stagnant and, 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 and men quit driving 12 hours to give a whole day and a half to another. We, we, just, we just sit still. And the work stops. And, and I do not want the work to stop. I do not want the work to stop. So today, today I'm doing what Nehemiah done. Today, Nehemiah said, I ain't got this, but we can get this. We will put our faith in God. We will pray and trust God, and we will position so that the attack, when, 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 the, when the attack comes, we are being positioned to shore up the walls. I want, listen, not just, I'm not just talking about this church. I'm talking about your home. When did you quit the work that God called you to do? When did, you, when did, when did the, the work of the Lord just stop? I can tell you, I don't know the date, the time, or how, but I can tell you what done it. The enemy got among you. And before you knew it, before you knew it, whack, there he was. And it shut down. And some of you may have been shut down for years. Some of you may have, may have, may have been just, the work has stopped. I, 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 some of us, it's just, some of us, it's just, it's just, it's the battle of keeping the work going whenever, whenever you pridefully say, I got this, and you ain't enough to do it. I ain't enough to do it. Faith in God and doing a cow call to rally the help to find the location and to get the direction is what does it. You don't push a bull or a cow out of a thicket without some help. We pushed that bull for two hours and were exhausted. And finally, I positioned Ty and Michael where they should be, and I thought, man, if we can just flush him that direction, then when he comes out, he'll hit them, and he'll go on further. We looked and looked and looked, and finally, Audie gives me a holler. He, he goes, whoop, and I, I'm like, hey, he wasn't 20 yards. I couldn't see him, but he was right there. I said, hey. Woo, you right there? Yeah. Where's the bull? He's between us. Couldn't even see him. You want to talk about something being among you? Audie's on foot. The thicket is so bad, he's on foot plowing through the briars, and there's the bull. And I'm 15, 20, 10, 15 yards the other side of the bull. He said, he's right between us. I said, man, he needs to go to the west. And he said, he's turning and going to the east. You better get there or we won't get him again. So I, I'm in the thicket, and I'm trying. Me and Ahab are, are doing the best we can to get out of there. And sure enough, we got out of the thicket just in time to see him and the dogs run out of this one, across the field, into the next one. <laughs> I was so done. I was so discouraged. I was like, if I could have just gotten there, I would have roped him as soon as he come out. We would've, he would have... And then I would have sat back and choked that son of a gun. You hear me? I don't care what he cost. I want to kill him. I want to choke that son of a gun till he... <laughs> Tell Peter, they ain't never spent 12... They ain't never spent as much time hunting a dang bull in the thicket. Briars cut up, kids cut up. 
horses wore out, dogs exhausted, and he just, you know he's laughing at you when he goes from here to there. You hear me? He, he, he runs out of this thicket into that thicket. <laughs> I, and you know what I bet he did? I bet when he got to the edge of that last thicket, he could hear me busting the brush and poof, 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 coming out of there. He went, what, 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 y'all watch. As soon as he gets where he can see me, <laughs> he just dillied around right on top of that hill. I come out of the woods and there he went. Mm. I already come walking out. Not a dry stitch on him. I mean, all he was toast. He looked up. <laughs> oh, I said, I didn't, get, I didn't get here in time. So we did what we had to do. We rode back up to the pens. We picked the boys up along the way. And we rode up and we swallowed our pride. And said, we can't get him today. We're spent. The bulls, wore, the cattle, dogs were wore out. They don't went to the creek. We're wore out. The bull is wore out so bad that if we caught him today, he'd die. Granted, I would be happy. <laughs> but, but, but economically, that, that's a bad decision. We swallowed our pride and we rode up there and told him that we couldn't get him caught today. In verse 14... Nehemiah said, when I saw the fear, I rose and I spoke to the nobles, the officials, and to the rest of the people. Do not be afraid of them. Remember that the Lord, who is great and awesome, and, he, and remember who is... Hold on a minute. That's too important to mess up. When I saw their fear, I rose up and spoke to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. Pause right there. Now, the Lord showed me something right here that's important. He... When he saw their fear, I, you mean to tell you all why I haven't preached on division this year? Why I haven't preached on, 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 on uh, uh, the pride that's in our church? Why I haven't preached on the arrogance that's coming at us? Why I haven't preached on the spirits, the evil spirits that have attached itself to people among our church is because I didn't want to scare y'all. I, 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 you naturally think as a shepherd, I'll, I'll take care of them, I'll protect them. I, 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 don't, I don't want y'all to be scared. You know, then John resigns. The last thing y'all probably want to hear is I am at the worst point in my ministry. Did y'all ever want to hear that today? How many of y'all came here wanting to hear your preacher say, listen, I've been through hell with me and my marriage. I have done some ignorant stuff, but I have never been more discouraged in the ministry than I am right now. How many of you want to hear that? That's where I'm at. I have never been... Now listen, I've been way more overwhelmed. I have been way more terrified. I have been way, way, way more confused but I don't think I've ever been more frustrated and discouraged than I am at this point in my life. And I, I see why. Because I thought I was protecting y'all from what I was dealing with. But all I was doing was giving him more ground. All I was doing was allowing more time for the enemy to infiltrate. Listen, the enemy is not in people. The enemy is in the evil spirits that want to stop the work of the Lord. And they are here. They are here. They are among us. They are attached to us. I have rebuked and repented. I, I, I'm sure there's still some lingering in my closets. And when they rear their head, I pray God gives me the wisdom to go, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You prideful, selfish. I, that's what I'm doing right here in front of you is I'm saying I was prideful and thought I got this. So I haven't asked any of you to pray for me about this. I haven't asked any of you to pray for our church and the unity of our church. And I haven't warned any of y'all that division is among us. I thought, I'll, keep, I'll handle it. I'm a man. That's my pride. That's my arrogance. I'm confessing it to you. And you'll have an opportunity to confess your own. You don't need to confess it to me. You must confess it to the Lord. And you must claim by the blood of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, to cast it from you. Okay. I'm not mad today. In verse 14, he said it when he spoke... To the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. The nobles were the pure. Do you know that there's pure among us? There are some people here that are so pure, ain't they? I just love them. They're, so, they're pure among us, those nobles. You know who the officials are? The leaders. The officials, those that were chosen by the people to lead the people. Those that were chosen by Nehemiah to position and lead and take charge of this section and that section. And You're in charge of that. Get it done. Arena team leader, lay pastor, Chuck Wagon team, officials. But who, who did he not leave out? 
the rest of the people. He wanted to make sure everybody heard. Everybody, listen, I want you all to know that the enemy wants to stop the work in your life and in Barn and Cowboy Church and in my life. Nothing would please him more than to stop what he's doing in each and every one of our lives. But pride and arrogance and, and division is how he does it. I feel so much freer just by standing up here and saying, because of my pride, I have not preached on division. I have not pre because I knew it was around. I've been warned time and time and time and time again, but I kept telling the elders, that's our job. We have to maintain unity. We have to protect the flock. I have to inform the flock. I have to, I, 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 it is my, my responsibility. It is my job to protect, but, but it's never my job to protect through pride. So I'm informing each and every one of you today. So if you don't get nothing else out of this, no, you need to preach for me. No. Well, you can preach for me too. <laughs> you need to pray for me. Because I, like that biker dude told me, you're in too deep to get out. I, I was born too late. Verse 13, the, the rest of verse 14 says, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. Now listen, don't remember me. I ain't great and awesome. If you're sitting there not, not sure and wondering what, what's going to happen to bar none, don't remember John Riggs. He was great and awesome and he was doing a good job. The Lord is who you better remember. Don't remember Stacy Wiley or, or any of us. Don't remember any man. Remember that the Lord is awesome. He is mighty. The Lord is awesome and mighty. You remember that He is. Now read, uh, now I love the rest of this. He said, remember that the, the Lord who is great and awesome, not mighty. He's, he's awesome. He's awesome. And, and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. Now there, I, here's what I want to make sure you know. There's two people he said he, he did not say for us to fight for. Did y'all catch that? Only two. Two people that we are not to fight for. You want me to tell you who they are? Yourself or your husband. Wives, get behind your husband. You ain't supposed to be the one fighting. Shut your mouth and get behind your husband. <laughs> Women fight with their tongues, and they are, that, that, the tongue is evil. I'm, I, you can hate me. That's what he said. Nehemiah said, fight for your brothers, for your sons, for your daughters, for your wives, and for your homes. Because women were not designed to fight in a battle. So listen to me, men, you're the ones that got to fight. This is not a bash against women. This is telling you to man up. You're the one that looks good sporting a black eye. Not your wife. And you don't fight for yourself. So, you know why it's hard for me to do a cattle call when I find him? When I find him, when I find that, when I found that bull, I didn't want to call out because I wanted to catch him on my own, and I wanted to call out after I had him caught. A little pride in that. I, 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 get, I get you. I get you. The reason I haven't called out earlier this year is because I wanted to handle this. It don't make no sense. It's stupid. It's stupid to want to get your butt kicked and handed to you repeatedly. But I have a malfunction in me somewhere that thinks I'm not doing good unless I'm getting, going through hell and getting beat up while I'm there. I don't understand it. I do not like it. I do not choose it. However, I repeat this cycle. You, you that have been here a while, you know. I, I come back to these places, and it's always in July when it's 110 degrees, and I'm exhausted, wore out, and my butt has been kicked for so long. Ain't it, Brian? And I finally go, Brian, I don't know what to do. And Brian says, well, I can tell you what to do if you're asking me. But I ain't going to waste my breath if you don't get ready to hear it yet. Or I call, I mean, I don't know why we do that, except for the reason of pride. Fight for, don't fight for yourself anymore. Don't fight for yourself anymore. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your sons and your daughters and your wives. Your wives and your home. This, if this is your home, if this is your home, then you've got no business not getting in this fight, men. Now, if you're visiting today, I'm glad you're here.
they're thinking, I ain't never coming back there. <laughs> I'll tell you this, here's what I'll tell you. If you're visiting here, if you're visiting here and you ain't got nobody to fight for you, there's some some bucks in here that'll fight. That's what I'll tell you. All right. All right. <laughs> that, I never thought about visitors today. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Verse 15, when our enemies, listen to this, this is huge. When our enemies heard that it was known to us and that God had frustrated their plan, then all of us returned to the wall each one to his work. The, let me, once again, I remind you, the enemy's among us, and he's listening, and I'm telling him, we know what you're doing. We ain't afraid to know that you're among us, that you have attached your stinking, slimy, evil self to our members. We see you, Satan, and we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You're not welcome here. My brothers... My sisters, our family, our kids, our home will be protected simply by us making sure he knows we know. Do you know how much ground I've given him all year by not making known that we know that he know that we know? Come on. Stay with me as I try to find myself. I want him to know we know. There is not a person in this barn that does not know Jesus or does not love Jesus or they're not here today because of the love of someone that is here today. None of us came in here with an evil plot and plan. Satan come in through some of us. Me through my pride. Me through my arrogance. Me through my hard-headedness. Me through my messed up, demented... My wife asked me the other day, why do you think you have to be dog beat, wore out, tired with 42,000 things to get done done? before you can feel good about yourself. I said, I don't know. I don't know why I'm like I am, but I wish I could be like I ain't. Does that sound like somebody? Paul, Paul wrote that. Paul, what a wretched man. I know what wretchedness feels like. I walk in wretchedness sometimes. This week, this last six weeks, I have been wretched because I'm, I've not wanted to preach this and I've been disobedient to my father. And he said, okay, I will not speak until you want to be spoken to. So he has not spoke to me. And I'm telling you right now, he's speaking to me. And I am cool if none of y'all love me anymore. I'm cool with that. I'm not cool. I said in 08, I will preach until the Lord takes his hand off of me and then I will be done. The Lord has not taken his hand off. I removed his hand because of my stubbornness and my pride and my unwillingness to be truthful. Because I was not, not because I was evil or mean. I just, I didn't, I didn't know what I wasn't, didn't know. But he showed me and then I became obedient. No, he showed me, and I became disobedient. Six weeks of detention make a man want to get obedient again. <laughs> Six weeks of, listen, hear me, Lord, speak to me, Lord, and, and you get nothing. <laughs> you, be, and you know every week, you got, y'all think it's a coincidence that I lined up music and a speaker two weeks back to back? No. That's called strategy. <laughs> it's called, some of y'all should have seen the white flag. <laughs> Okay, let's get finished. Let's get finished. Two things. He told us to remember the Lord and fight. And he told us who to fight for. And easier for me to tell you who not to fight for than it is to remind you who to fight. You don't never fight for yourself. You never fight for yourselves and wives, you don't fight for your husbands. You allow that man to find the courage, find the male fortitude, find the cojones to get up and come, come fight. You, you allow, don't, you, don't fight for him. Don't be behind him. Don't you take that. Okay. I was not, I was, I was talking to you, honey. I love you. Sorry about that. Now, finally to the scripture. I'm going to skip 16 and 18. You should read it. No, I'm not. I'm going to read it. I don't care what your time looks like today. Because today is an important day. I, 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 okay. All right. 16. Listen, listen how he taught them. This is what Nehemiah said to do in 16. Listen, if you don't like this, when you get to heaven, you tell Nehemiah. All right. 
Verse 16. I had to dump a little bit off of me right there. From that day on, listen to how smart Nehemiah was. Y'all, see y'all later. From the day, listen to what Nehemiah said. From that day on, half of my sermons, half of my servants carried on the work while half of them held the spears. The shields and the bows and the breastplates and the captains were behind the whole house of Judah. Those who were rebuilding the wall and those who carried the burdens took their load with one hand doing the work and the other hand holding a weapon. As for the builders, each wore his sword girded at his side and he built while the trumpeters stood near me. Listen to what he's telling them. There is a point in time where in order to maintain unity, you've got to separate your forces. He said, half of y'all keep building, the other half watch their back. This is why this is so important. We are at a pivotal point in our ministry at Barnum Cabell Church. Crucial. Me and Brian met in January. We weren't even speaking to each other. I did not like him in January. January? Me and Brian have a love-hate relationship, and we're both good at it. And, and, and I said, Brian, Satan is going to do all he can to divide the band and me and the, John and the messages, and there's going to be so much disunity. We must pray, and we must find a way to not allow that. To, I put it all on Brian's shoulders. I didn't tell the band. I didn't tell the church. I just, man to man, I said, it's, and I, remember, I can remember it. We, I met him for lunch, and I said, it's your job. That was so wrong of me. It is our job. It is our body, guys. It is our body. It, we are doing the work of the Lord. Not I am doing the work of the Lord. Do y'all see my arrogance? Please don't let me see it by myself. Because you got your own. If you can see mine, because <laughs> I can see yours because I see mine. I didn't see yours till I seen my own. But when I seen mine, <laughs> I, I begin to see yours and I begin to go, oh my gosh. That is so wrong. That is what, not what Nehemiah done. Nehemiah said, half of you keep building, half of you start guarding. And then those of you that are building, keep a weapon close by. Keep it, I love that they said the sword. Do you all know what the sword is? It's the word. The word. Word to your mother. The word. <laughs> you know, I don't care what you're doing. Be in the word. Have the word. Have the word. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, I almost busted out rapping. My draw, I, I just said that and my pants wanted to droop. Okay. Come here, let me see. Okay, all right, I'm going to finish up. I'm going to finish up, I promise. Verse 19. Verse 19 and 20. This is the only two, this is the two scriptures that he hollered at me and told me I needed to know. Verse 19 and 20. I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, did he leave anybody out? No. He said it to the, to the pure ones. So those of you that are among us that are pure, we're so glad you're here. I want you to know where we're at. The officials, those of you that are serving and leading and called by God, I want you to know where we're at. And the rest of you, you need to know too. He said, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated on the wall far from one another. Seven years, I am, I am as far away from, from the people that helped begin this church than I've ever been in my life. And I used to feel guilty about it. I don't talk to Wiley or the elders maybe once a week. I don't talk to Tony who has been with us from the, I mean, I don't talk to Tony by text maybe once a month. I don't talk to my own brother who helped raise me. And I don't talk to him but maybe once or twice a week, maybe on a good week. Or a bad week, depending on the situation. Because, you know why? The work that we are doing is a big expanse. It is a long way from where I'm at today working and where Dale's at working and where Tony's at working. And the wall, the work that the Lord has us doing is a big work. And there is a lot of gaps between us. There is some distance in between us. But we are to keep working. We are to keep working. In verse 20... Verse 20 sums it up. I also want you to know that when we get, that's why we're vulnerable right now. Because we're stretched too thin. We're stretched out way too thin. I want you to know that uh, 
I want to help stop the process of men becoming lay pastors, and then I see their wives with the most frustrated look on their face. The most frustrated women in this church are the lay pastor's wives. And I'm speaking from seven years of experience. I am tired of Satan getting that. I'm tired. And the reason they're so wore out and the wives are so frustrated is because the call on their husband and the, the purpose that their husband is fulfilling is taking time from them. They're getting separated on the wall. They're getting separated on the wall. I'm tired of seeing lay pastors and team leaders serve for two years, three years, and they're done. They're toast. They're like, <laughs> send a postcard, I'm out. I, I, and I, I don't. And I, and I, 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 I am not responsible for that happening, but the enemy is. The enemy does that, but he don't do it from outside the walls. He's in here, and it's the things that we're working our cans off and trying to do. That this is not in my sermon, but listen to me. When me and Audie Green rode up to Ronnie Bartley and said, "Ronnie, we ain't gonna get him today," that is one of the hardest things for a cowboy to say. It's like, I would rather you pull my teeth out. Well, that, that don't hurt no more because they pop out. But <laughs> then say, I can't get him. Today, I'm saying, I, can't, I, I ain't got this. We have to get this. We have to get it. Look what he promised them. Look what Nehemiah promised. And this is the promise that is still today. He says, at whatever place you hear the sound of the trumpet... Rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Amen. Whatever place you... Do you know the three things you do when you do a cattle call when you've been searching for a cow? And when you finally get there and you... I forgot to unmute myself. You finally see the cow and you give out a cow call. You tell the location. You rally the troops and you get direction. Today I've, I have issued a cattle call. I've blown the trumpet. Will you answer the call? Will you answer the call? It's not up to me. It's up to us. I've, I have issued a call. I've told you. Here's where the problem is. There's division among us. There's strife among us. There's pride among us. There's arrogance. Will you answer the call? Will you answer the call? I confess my sins to you. And I ask you to forgive me for my arrogance and my pride. Will you stand and do the same? I know it's late, and I know you're tired. And some of you sure didn't come to hear what I preached today. But I will preach next week because I finally was obedient this week. So if none of y'all got nothing, I got my bucket empty. It's like a septic tank that you dump out. Hey guys, uh, as a football team, that's what I always tell my boys from junior high to high school. When you start out a game, before you start, before you walk on the field, you decide as a team, we don't give up, we rise up. And that immediately calls God in to be a part of your team. That's the first quarter. Second quarter, you overcome. So when you go in at halftime, whatever went wrong, you got to figure out how to overcome it. All right, third quarter, you walk back out on the field and you conquer. The fourth quarter, you give God the glory. But here's the key. Don't give up, rise up. Immediately, before you take the field, call God in to take the field with you. But don't be prideful and think you can't learn to overcome. We've got to overcome. And most of the time, as a football team, what you overcome is the mistakes that you made. Not the mistakes the team, the, the opposing team made. You see what I'm saying? Mm. So when you come in at halftime, you again call on God to show us how to overcome. You walk out on the third quarter, if you admitted and overcome your mistakes, Jesus Christ shows you how to conquer. Amen. And in the fourth quarter, you give God back the glory. Amen. So that's how we play football. If we, we don't give up, we rise up. We conquer, we overcome, and we give God the glory. And then we always end it with ride hard, have fun, and honor God.
I'm going to pray this out. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day, Lord. I thank you for Jason's heart. Lord, I just lift him and his family up to you. Lord, I just ask that you continue to, to grow him, to work him. Lord, I just ask that he continues to reach. Not to, be, not to be just a leader of a church, but to be God's champion. And that he becomes God's champion. Not for a church, but for God. Lord, I ask that you be with every member of this church, everybody in this church. That, that not only will they just come to be served, but they'll come with a heart that's open and, and come with a heart with a desire to become God's champion. Lord, I, I don't ask that, that Bar None grows as a church or grows as a leader of a church. I, I ask that Bar None grows as God's champion. And it's all for you, Lord, and, it, and that you show us. We don't give up, we rise up. We, don't over, we overcome, we conquer, and we give God the glory. But the only way to do this, Lord... It's to admit our mistakes, to put ourselves out of the way, to give up our pride, and to honor you. Lord, I ask that you be with us the rest of the week. You bring us back next week stronger. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and may we always continue to ride hard, have, have fun, and honor God. Amen. Amen.